Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub so you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And today we're going to be diving into our Indie Comic Book Weekends. If you're new to the page, our Indie Comic Book Weekends is when we cover at least one or two issues throughout the weekend of an Indie Comic of my choice. Now if you guys have an Indie Comic that you would like covered, or you know somebody, or you have a comic of your own that you would like, we can definitely have it reviewed here, we can go over it. Give it a little bit of publicity and get it out there. So if you know anybody that's looking to have their indie comic reviewed, let me know down in the comments and we will definitely check that out. And today's indie comic is The Resistance. Now this comes from AWA and writer J. Michael Strozinski. Now in the last issue, we really left off with the world had a virus hit. An almost world ending one. And such a little amount of the population was left over by the end of this. But those that were remaining, individuals started to gain superhuman powers. And without further ado, let's dive into this issue. So diving into this one, we're picking up on random locations throughout the world. And we're seeing this genetic mutation happen. You know, we, we were brought to Portland, Oregon, where uh, uh, an older teen is seemingly having his... his mind altered in a way to he's hearing voices now this could be something psychological but more or less we're really assuming here that this is some kind of power more than likely reading thoughts or, or has super hearing something of that nature picking up in the university of virginia there's sandy ramirez and she's pretty much busting a guy for roofing people and peddling drugs that knock people unconscious and we see her her superpower here, you know, she's able to smell a drug that, that's odorless, that's tasteless. And it, it also seems that she has some kind of super strength because she throws this guy straight out the window like it's no problem. You know, picking up in Moscow, we're met with Fedora Antonovich of Russian descent. And his skin seems to be impenetrable because anytime the doctor tries to push a needle into him, he's unable to do it. And this individual is able to make his escape by beating up the bodyguard, taking a jump out of the window, and taking off. Now, so we're under the premise that this virus is doing this to everybody. You know, it, it lets us know the virus enters a human cell, you know, and at that point it begins to quickly modify the surrounding genetic material so it can appear non-threatening. Now, picking up in a, a closed-off high-security intelligence briefing for the United Nations, what's left of it anyway, they're, they're starting to get reports of all these things popping up all over the world. And, and because everybody got superpowers based on a virus, it's not necessarily, so, you know, the, they're just the rich that are getting it or just the poor. We're seeing, you know, law-abiding citizens, criminals, rich, poor alike of every nation around the world getting these superpowers. And they believe that one of these individuals that has superpowers is responsible for the assassination of a foreign minister. Because there was no possible way that the individual could have escaped that building without having some kind of supernatural ability. Or at least to their understanding. And besides one common denominator, they haven't been able to link any other reason for people developing these powers. The only link they have is it ranges from late teens to mid 30s. And they have no exact number on how many people have actually been given this, this power through a virus. You know, 5% of the total number of infected survived, or about 20 million people. So, theoretically, only even if only half of these individuals gain powers, we're talking about 10 million people worldwide who have some kind of superpower. Now, picking up in the United States, the United States is talking about what they should do here. And this is a shady government being shady at, at its worst. Because what they want to do is be able to identify everybody who has superhuman powers. And to do this, they're going to use what's, what laws are in place already to be able to have them essentially be able to cotton swab and blood test individuals and see who has what. And their out that they're going to use here is that they're going to authoritatively quarantine people. And they're going to use the premise that they're potential sources of infection. You know, in the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, we saw him before in the last issue where he got kidnapped. He, he strongly disagrees with this. Like, this is hugely a violation of constitutional rights and things of that nature. And he, you know, we, we saw in the last issue, and it shows us here, he, he disagrees with the president, and he gets kidnapped by a bunch of what seem to be black op agents. And someone was staring at the window, and then somebody w was telepathically communicating with Sandy. 
and Sandy and Fedora are in a car together and it looks like they're headed out to intercept and they crash right into the car. They hop out and he starts taking rounds to the chest but they seem to just be bouncing off of him. At the same time she rips a car door off of its hinges and uses it as a shield so she may not have impenetrable skin but she does have super strength and so does he because we see him just rip this door off grab the general, and they hightail it into a van and get out of there. And this is our first introduction to the Resistance. A group organized of essentially superheroes that are off the grid. Nobody knows about them, no one knows who they are, but they, they, they've they infiltrated certain spots of the government, like our individual back at the White House that was keeping eyes on everything. And so our individuals all sit down of the Ewing Committee, and, and they talk about, you know, what how they could possibly even track these people because you know people are going to be hiding themselves attempting to live normal lives other ones are going to want you know power for fame and fortune and things of that nature other ones are going to be vigilantes going out there and beating up scum and things of that nature but there's also a unique group and they call these this group moths and what makes them so unique is they have powers but their powers are, are a unique so they don't activate until they choose to activate their powers but when they do activate their powers it, it's an energy blossom of sorts and, and it's such a high powerful power that they have that it limits their lifespan gives them like six months to live so we can only assume how powerful these individuals are going to be if it takes uh, takes pretty much their life away from them to be able to use this power and that will be where this issue ends let me know what you guys think down in the comments i have thoroughly been enjoying the resistance so far i really like the idea of it you know the virus striking most of the world's population getting wiped out bunch of people getting superpowers and it moving forward with still you know governments trying to rebuild the world trying to to fix itself with such limited population in comparison to what was before so yeah, if you guys haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe to the page. Let me know what you think in the comments. And until the next video.